I don't know. I, I like Bethesda games a lot. Like I, I, I like Fallout Three. I like Fall. I like um, Skyrim a lot. Like Skyrim is a huge deal for me. Um, Fallout Four, I even thought was kind of cool. Like it, there were definitely problems with it, and I thought it definitely, you know, had issues. But I didn't hate it as much as a lot of people did. And I just kind of, I've, I've come to accept that while a lot of Bethesda games kind of struggle at a lot of the things other games are really, really good at, for some reason, they're really, really good at making a world that I want to be in for a really, really long time, even with the seams kind of obviously there. So I'm looking forward to this. I'm, I'm fully expecting something that's going to be pretty engrossing and pretty cool. I don't know if it's going to be game of the year material necessarily. I don't know if it's going to blow my mind or anything, but I'm expecting at least a very solid, fun Bethesda game uh, that's going to probably devour a lot of my time. Uh, Whether or not it actually comes to the beginning of this or the first half of this year is another question entirely. I, I, I don't know if I'm super confident in that, but I have no doubt that that's the plan. I think that's probably the plan, but we'll see how that goes. Um, but I'm I'm looking forward to it. I wouldn't say my hype level is pretty high, though. Like, I'm just like, yeah, well, I'll play it when it comes out. You can just tell what games I'm into and what studios I'm into and what publishers I'm into. Just look at the games I play. Um, so Bethesda doesn't have a huge place in my gaming um, repertoire after Fallout. Th- from Bethesda Game Studios, Fallout 3 was the last game of theirs that I beat and played extent, you know, more than 10 or 20 hours. Um, I'm more going to miss the studios around them, like id and arcane and, and whatever. But, uh, yeah, yeah. So for me, Starfield is, I, I, I don't have any expectations for it either. And I'm not particularly interested in it. And in fact, people might remember that when we discussed it last year, I was concerned about how big it sounded. Like it sounded too broad and too big. Like it's not exciting to me at all. I remember we were talking about that, that there's a thing where they pull out of a shot and they show a system. And I'm like, that's all I remember thinking. I'm like, that's awesome. You better really explore the shit out of this star system. It's gonna be a very personal story, maybe something like the expanse or something. And and it's like, no, now you're going to the cluster and the and it's like, oh, my God, no, I just can't. do Yeah, it. well, I used to be a huge, huge Bethesda games fan. Love pretty much got all of the achievements on Fallout 3, played a ton of Skyrim. I have the platinum on Fallout 4. Nice. That's a tough uh, which, one because you have to because I, I have the Fallout 3 plat. And all the mm-hmm. trophies and all the DLC, but the Fallout 4 plat required you to have the, the you build your your area. Um, yeah, it's your settlement. Yeah, it was not wasn't fun uh, to do that. So in Fallout 4, I think was pretty good it, aside from some issues. You know, I think a lot of people have the same feelings about that game. Yeah. But here's what I'll say about them now is that P- you sh- people should not forget Fallout 76. And I know that the instant response to from saying that from a lot of people is like, well, Bethesda proper didn't make that game. I don't care. You wheeled out Todd Howard and had him sell this game. You put Bethesda on the box. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. They were still stewarding over that game and let it happen the way it did. So I am extremely skeptical of this game. Uh, But I, like I said, I'm a big fan of those other games. And so I have Game Pass for PC, so I will be checking it out on launch day for sure. But I wouldn't necessarily be going in and pre-ordering the Ultimate Edition or anything like that just based on the history here. There's a lot riding on this game for Bethesda, I think, after a lot of mishaps over the last few years. So we'll see. I'm I'm, I'm in agreement with you, Colin, about the, the scope of the game. I feel like the art direction is a little bland. Like there's there's no I can't think of like identifiable identifiable scenes from the trailers in my mind. So but if I can get immersed in the world and has a cool story and, and stuff like that, then cool. I, I want it to be great. Fallout 4 exposed Bethesda, in my opinion. And while it was a good game and right. interesting in its own right, it was very dated when it came out and when you think about games like, and I've said it before, Dying Light and The Witcher 3 specifically came out that year. Go look at those games and play those games side by side. It's a fucking joke, in my opinion, you know? Um, mm-hmm. And that doesn't mean that Fallout 4 is bad. It just meant that it was made in a vacuum. And I don't... So when I said I, I'm gaming it out, here's how I'm gaming it out. My expectation for Starfield, I would have tepid expectations and be question, questioning it as well. But... They have to know that they have to know 
that this game matters a great deal, right? And they have to know that a lot is riding on it, not only for Bethesda, because Bethesda has less riding on it, although it's within the Xbox family now. I mean, Bethesda has its fans and its fanboys hardcore locked in, probably more than Xbox even has in some way, just from over the years, all the different, all the different IP. And so I think that they look at it and they say, well, we know that your expectations are going to be soft. We have to meet and exceed those expectations. And they and so my gut instinct says that it's going to be great because how can it dude? How can it be that Starfield isn't going to be great? That would be so bad for the Xbox ecosystem that it wouldn't it would be calamitous. And so, again, gaming it out. They have to know this. They have to nail this game. They have to. It's just yeah. anything less. I don't. It's not even for Bethesda's sake. It's for the Xbox brand's sake. If Starfield is a miss. Or anything softer than what I would say is an eight and a half or a nine. I don't know, man, I because I, like that's the one that that's the one that everyone's pointing to. Right. So gaming it out, feeling like Microsoft understands the situation, feeling like Bethesda has the the relevant talent to make it happen. I feel like it's going to be great. My only fear is that it's going to maybe not look very good and it's going to be too big. And that's just a problem with a lot of games. A lot of games are too big. We're going to talk about um, a few in a little while. So that's my gut instinct about Starfield. I expect it to be great. And I yeah. think that they have to expect that it's going to get the shit beat out of it. If it's not. Will Starfield be 30 FPS? No I, way. I think it will be. I well because why? I think it could be. I think the, the, the like the, the idea. No, maybe not. I, I think you, there's no way that you can put out a. I, I just I, Bethesda specifically, like like a first part, like a big first party thing. So like I can't imagine launching at a at a thirty frames per second cap. That's going to look so shit. That's going to be that's that would be worse than that would almost be worse than if the game wasn't <laughs> wasn't great almost on some level where it's like I mean, you how hard is it to get a game like Bethesda like a, a Bethesda game running at 60? It can't be hard. Even with a new even with that new engine or whatever or that new like that suited up engine. I almost have a feeling that maybe like Maybe Bethesda's limited art style or like not not limited art style, but like kind of, you know, less of a focus on graphics kind of like is it has to it has to be worked into a strength somehow. And that's the way that I feel like you would do that. It's like, OK, this this game isn't supposed to be like a Horizon uh, Forbidden West type uh, like, oh, look at how good this looks at all at all moments. And so right. for that reason, we can we can boost it up to at least 60 all the time. I have to imagine that that's on some level being looked at as 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 a as an alternate kind of positive to the fact that like yeah it's not going to look nearly as good. In an interview with uh, our boy Ryan McCaffrey, Todd stated he believes BGS games are completely playable at 30 FPS and <sighs> and cares more about how the game looks than higher frame rate or 4K. So we need to check and see if that's a real statement he said. But if that's true, oh, yeah, then... he might have said it on on Ryan's uh, podcast or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would say I that's a crazy prioritization. I really hate I really hate that we we are so obsessed with the way something looks in, 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 in a way that doesn't matter. To video games, like why are we focused on 4K resolutions when like clearly frame rate and frame pacing matter more? Like, give me a 1440p game. If you if you max if Starfield max out at 1440p, I would not give a shit. I just assume. I don't know. I mean, you're right in the sense, but I would assume they also know the it just it seems stubborn if that's the result that you right, didn't. Yeah, it's a technology issue at that point. And I am there. They are using their own proprietary engine again. Right. So. That's a stubborn move, maybe, but maybe not. We'll see. 